an interesting day in court so far today actually you know it cannot have been any stranger things are starting to fall apart judge rata of course is losing his patience yet again what, what's surprising there with the defense but most importantly the witness is cracking under pressure why is the witness cracking under pressure all he has to do is answer questions and stand by his expertise remember yesterday he showed us his certifications that deem him an expert in what he needs to be experting but the expertise is not coming through in anything that he says if at all anything he seems confused lost no idea what's going on so remember to like this video as we go ahead and watch part one of things fall apart in judge rutter's court today uh, firstly uh, perhaps if we look at that where it says it was ported to cell c when was that done doesn't say the date but you will see attribute data unknown network south african mtn mobile telephone network south africa and then cell c lty south africa <coughs> Now, when I went to accuse number two now, he says he has never ported his number to cell C. He's always used Vodacom and MTN. I can't explain it. This, is not, this was not extracted by me. This was extracted by the download device network information that's embedded in on the card itself. Now, uh, at paragraph nine, yes, of your... Uh, at page three of uh, ex Exhibit DD in brackets five. Yes. Where it says, and paragraph nine thereof, the Samsung model SMJ500F forward slash DS with IMA numbers five, uh, 35098989 was not downloaded due to security pattern, and I'll end up there. Now, this is for, 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 for my clarification because my understanding was this and you explained it yesterday that because it's a dual sim card it will be given another ima number two ima numbers that's correct okay because my understanding was that a, 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 a mobile device and i'm standing subject to correction here a mobile device has got simply one fingerprint uh one uh, 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 identification mark that is uniquely for that particular device. If it's not a dual SIM, yes. yes. If it's a dual SIM, they'll have two IMA numbers. Uh, now, with respect to the, the, the numbers that accused number two says he was using at the relevant time period closer to his arrest, 2020, 2018, 19, he, he was using the following two numbers. The first number is the one that is on, on, on your analysis, which is 060, uh, but on your analysis it will be 2760-901-6890. And the other number will be 2765-567-1990. And this number here, although he does not dispute it, that is marked as Vodacom slash cell C, because we are still waiting for the 205s, because he's been in custody for too long. He says he doesn't recall it, but I'm putting it specifically. He's not denying or admitting it for, 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 until we get those things, because he says he can't recall some of the stuff. I understand, but this is the two SIM cards that was found inside yes. the phone. Yes. So that's how we identify the number. Okay. Uh, now, with respect to the last activity on the device, how would we determine the last activity on the device? Say, for example, in his, in his instance, he says, I was arrested on the 16th of June 2020, and the phones were seized from me and I've never had access to them ever since. Then we see from the photos that we were discussing, 17.9, and that's our paragraphs, that there are other data that was created after the arrest. Then how do we determine 
When was the last activity on the phone in that instance? That all the downloader must uh, testify about that. I can't testify. I don't know when it was last used. Uh, so you heard it yourself he says i don't know about that the downloader must come and testify it because i don't know why there's numbers showing up after he has been arrested and the phone has been confiscated well my thoughts and i'm not an expert hello probably people are trying to call him his family's trying to figure out where he is those are some possibilities in my opinion that i feel would be happening because the number is still active just because you're arrested and the phone has been confiscated doesn't mean the number stops being active and i think even if they turn the phone off or the battery finishes the phone number is still active that's what i would have said mr expert man just to sound you know a little bit knowledgeable or something like that not i don't know it's not my thing but here's but most interesting i got this comment let me know uh, your thoughts on this comment so when someone has your id number like as these accused when they were arrested the people who arrested them they are in possession of their ids anyone can register them okay i see that point and try to link them in the conversations and it will look like the accused had conversations meanwhile their phones were hacked same as for facebook account if someone can be in a position can be in possession i think that's what it's supposed to say if someone can be in possession of anyone's id they can catfish and make as if the accused were in conversation while not because their accounts were hacked as well as their cell numbers that is uh, very possible because other parties are in possession of their id numbers for instance when you go to the police and make an affidavit the first thing they need is your id number more worse when you are arrested something is fishy in this case so there you have it imzansi what are your thoughts comment down below let me know your thoughts on um this comment from one of our commenters and thank you so much for bringing that to the forefront and this is why i love to turn on comments you do notice that sabc shut down the comment section yesterday and the people did not enjoy that about it they let sabc know know let me know in the comment section if you enjoy watching the live with the comments on or with the comments off and um yeah but i digress let's get back to ramasipile but please remember to like this video as we continue on guessing things fall apart in judge rada's court part one my lord i'm almost done let me just find out if there's something that I now the last question perhaps uh lieutenant kennel with respect to your analysis, it wouldn't show, say for example, there are alleged communication between, say for example, accused number one and two. It wouldn't show the date of that communication, when the duration and all of that. Is that correct? That's uh, somebody else's job. That's on the section 205. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as the court please, my lord, that is all I had for the witness. Okay. Yes, Mr. So again, this witness, in my opinion, I feel was pretty useless because all he did was say, I don't know, that's not me, that's section 205. And I'm not sure why Baloy brought this witness to the stand because don't think he added much more value to the case. No linkages were able to be done. Um, the five IQ, it's, it was just weird. In fact, the witness stood there and confirmed that he doesn't know. I can't explain that when he was asked, when was the number ported to Celsi? And he was asked that question and then Ramasipili explained, well, my client has never been with Celsi ever. So don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, that was pretty interesting. Let's go in and listen to Nisi as things just can only deteriorate from here on. 